everybody. It's me. Uh, it's me, Helen Pritchard. So I want you to come and talk and have a drink with you guys. Cheers. Having a beer tonight because going off, <laughs> excuse the noise in the background, by the way, um, all of my children and their friends are here playing a pretty raucous game of the alphabet game. Cheers, everybody. So hopefully I'll get some people live tonight so I can practice putting you on my screen. <laughs> Something I've got to work on. So please do fill in the thing, leave your name uh, with StreamYard and then put your comments in here, hopefully where I can see them. But they weren't doing it the other day, so hopefully they'll start working. But anyway, if not, I'm just going to crack on and talk about, I can say, see it says, hello, I'm here, but it just says Facebook user. Oh, feels like that doesn't work so well. So please go and sign up or sign in or whatever you need to do. Here we go, Louise. Yeah, I can put you on the big screen. So thanks for helping me practice. Hi, Helen. Hi, Vicky Jakes. Looking glamorous. Oh, Facebook user. Evening. Doesn't work so well. Cheryl's here. Damn Meredith. I like Helen. That's better. Cheryl's here. Perfect. Okay, so cheers. Interesting you're here actually, Dan, because I'm talking about maximizing your time and money investment inside other people's paid programs. And your week work is done. Everyone go and check out. Oh, EWD short, is it again now? Anyway. Daniel, thank you very much for your input. Much appreciated. So, oh, Sue Gibbons. I'm like a super Sue fan at the moment. Amazing work being done behind the scenes by the lovely Sue. Although Abby was saying, don't tell everyone because we will pop them for ourselves. Um, but hello, and Facebook user, mm, can't see. <laughs> I look, I so said I've learned a new trick, which is how to put the words on the screen. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> now tonight's topic of choice. Oh, nice. Not too, not too far off, Dan. Not too far off at all. This is Dan's guess. Number one, pay. Number two, add value. Number three, get clients. Thank you, Dan. Helen did this in my world the right way and is also an okay person sometimes. Thank you. Dan, the feeling is mutual. You are also an okay person sometimes. Okay, so, yes, and let's see you now. And now everyone can see you. I'm gonna have to, I feel bad now, I wanna put everybody on. Oh, I can never pronounce your name. Because I've got, I know somebody who's got a name like yours, so I can't say it out loud. <sighs> Facebook user, Dan's an okay person sometimes too. Right, I'm going to focus now with my new toy. That sounded wrong. Okay, so how, anyone else got a guess on what they think the three things are that I've done over the past five years to get a pretty solid return on my investment into paid memberships, masterminds, and programs, <clears throat> and it's interesting that Dan's here because Dan is one of the people that I was going to talk about tonight. <laughs> okay, you need to register on StreamYard. Uh, three programs I've ever paid to be in. They are Denise Duffield Thomas's Money Bootcamp, <clears throat> Dan Meredith's Espresso with Dan, and Mitch Miller's Dark Horse Council, all different. One is a paid program, Money Bootcamp, Money Mindset, one is a monthly membership, Expresso with Dan for business. And Mitch's was an in-person international mastermind. So how did I get a return on that investment? So Dan then was maybe, I think it was like 95 quid a month, something like that. Um, <clears throat> Denise was $1,500 investment and uh, Mitch was for 30K, I think, or something like that. Oh, oh he's back now. So, invested overall, let's say, 
I don't know, let's say 40 grand or something like that. Let's say 40 to 50 grand. How, how much money do you think I've made back that I can actually pinpoint has come back to me from money given to me by people in those three worlds? I'm going to say now my best guess would be probably half a mil in total. If I think about all the people that have joined my programs, bought from me, come to things of mine, you know, <clears throat> whether it's LinkedIn Mastermind, Business Mastermind, Catalyst, like most people in my world have found me through either being in their world or being a guest expert in their world. So I'm going to go for somewhere between 200 and 500 grand, I would say, if I was going to actually top, top it up. Right, and that is a significant return on my investment. Um, but it's not just the money investment, right? It's the time, it's about being in those communities and being a part of those communities. <clears throat> and the three things I'm going to talk about tonight are all interlinked. So I'll tell you the reason why I joined these programs. <clears throat> so Denise, Dan, and Mitch, the three people who I saw as being way ahead of me, but exactly where I wanted to be, as in audience size, income size, like, you know, in terms of like, where do I want to be in five years? That kind of cliche, right? And bear in mind, I joined these people's programs probably about five years ago. Well, Mitch is a bit, bit, bit more, more recently, it's 2018, I think. I wanted three things from these people. I wanted to learn from them so I could apply that into my own businesses. I wanted to move in the circles that they moved in because I wanted to up-level my audience and I wanted to be with people who were investing in their businesses as well. And I wanted to learn from them. And that, that was my motivation. And it's interesting because now people make a decision on whether they're going to invest in my programs or not, right? We're having these conversations all the time, real, like in person, on the phone sort of thing with the team talking to people or in, in you know, forums and public and Q&A and all that kind of stuff. Loads of people are making that decision all the time on whether they want to buy into one of my programs, right? LinkedIn Mastermind or Business Mastermind is usually the decision or catalyst, but, you know, one of the three. And quite often, it's really interesting to see the buyer psychology, right? They want to know where, how, how will I make my money back, right? How will I make my money back? And it's always around doing, on the, doing the work. And I don't always see people looking at that bigger picture of like, coming into the program is not always just about, I pay my money and I do the work and I get the result, right? But that should always be your first thing, right? So, okay, let me press some more buttons as I become, before your very eyes, a StreamYard Pro. So, number one, it's interesting, Dan picked this one up straight away. Do the work, right? If you're buying into a program of any kind, membership, mastermind, whatever, right? You're investing because you want to understand the thing that you're being taught, but you also have to implement. <laughs> There's two parts to being in a program. I'm just going to use program as a catch-all for all these things, right? One is to learn, and the two is to do, right? It's, it's not an A thing. It's an A and a B. You have to put those two things together. Otherwise, you become, as Dan would say, a cock hopping course junkie, right? You're in courses, you're in programs, you're learning, you're educating yourself, which is great and is definitely part of the puzzle. Yeah, when you're looking at the A, B puzzle, it's definitely part, you've got to learn it. But some people stop there. And if you don't do the work, implement what you've learned, you've not made any money. You're not going to make your money back. You're not going to get a return on that investment. Sometimes you have to do everything. I know in Dan's program and Denise, and I'm like, you could, you could be educating yourself forever, listening to these people, and you know, get being getting in cl as close, you know, close to them and working out what's going on in their stuff. They could teach you stuff forever, and the programs can become super overwhelming, right, at times because this is so much stuff. The education piece of investing in a program is only a part. The, implementation and one of the nicest thing Mitchell has ever said to me <laughs> or about me um, was I've never met anybody 
who takes action like you. So we would go, we would meet up, we would go on a wild night. I mean, you can only imagine what the nights out were like in Thailand or Colombia or Bali. Like we'd have these wild nights out, get in at whatever time in the morning. But I'd be there at the table, you know, nine o'clock with my notebook and pen, ready to do the work. And then I'd do my bit, the mastermind, you know, I'd talk my bit through, get my advice, and I'd be like, right, I'm done. And she'd be like, do you not want to talk to anything else? I was like, no, no, I'm going to do this thing. And then when we'd meet up again in the like, next quarter, I'd have done that thing and a load of other things, and I'd be ready to do the next thing. And it's the same, like, you educate yourself, and then you take action. You educate, and then you take action. That's where you get a return on your investment in a paid program. Education can be procrastination. I'm just going to watch this one more thing like that's in the vault or I'm just going to watch one more live of Helen's or whatever like you know I'm just going to go to one more call right and all that stuff's great absolutely show up in that program educate yourself absorb it and enjoy it but you've got to take action outside you've got to implement 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 you've got to become a, a ruthless implementer of everything you get taught and you have to take personal responsibility and hold yourself accountable for both educating yourself inside the program and implementing the work outside the program. That's how you're going to get a return on your investment pretty quick. It's about time invested as well, right? Not just about money invested. It's about putting your energy into being in something and paying to play, right? You go all in. You know, do, if you commit to something, do the thing you said you would do. Forget about, like, <clears throat> people get so excited to buy from me, from Dan, from Denise, from, from everybody, right? We, like, it's just a thing. Like, if we are good marketers, I'm not putting myself in the same category. <laughs> I don't know if Dan's still watching, but I'm like, all right, mate. If we as marketers are good marketers, of course you're going to be excited to buy. That's our job. Our job is to get you excited to buy, ready to buy, willing to buy, understanding what you're buying, knowing that you're ready to, to have the transformation that we're promising, right? Our job is to get you ready and to get you in the right place so you're like, I'm excited to buy. You have to hold on to that energy for the whole in time you're in that program, right? You have to commit to it. And one of the things I found so interesting today, so, oh, sorry, if you don't know what, what made me think of this um in and you'll be able to use any program you're in it's got a facebook group you can search your own name inside that group and it will bring up all your posts since the time began in that program and i did it today in money boot camp what an incredible experience right because it's five years of me this kind of like evolution of me from like a brand new, and I remember it took me back so much. I was like so green and like enthusiastic and eager to please, and just everything was crumbling around me. I put it on a credit card. I was, I wanted to do the work, but I, I was just in such a bad place in so many ways. And it was so interesting to see. But what was really, really interesting is how consistently I've shown up and done the work in that program all the time for five years. And it's like watching, it's like watching the evolution of me. I talk about 50 or 60 screenshots. I spent an hour and a half doing it this morning because it was like, it was like, an, it was like therapy <laughs> and an education for me. And it just gave me such a revelation of why I've been successful in terms of my investment, my return on my investment from being in paid programs, right? I was like, of course, look how consistent I've been in the way that I've done the work that I signed up to do. Even when it was hard, even when I was wobbling, even when life got in the way and there's some stuff in there. And I was like, oh, I remember that. I remember so well when I had to get rid of my agency and let my staff go and I posted in there that night and I remember that feeling. I was connected back to it. I was like, oh my goodness. And then about my first ever, my 99 pound thing, my first ever, um, launch which was like my 5k launch that I was like absolutely buzzing about which was great and it was um you know my first 10k a month my first when I bought my Rolex which obviously Dan's a part of that story 
you know, when I invested in the dark horse, which is more money I'd ever invested in anything, you know, when I did my first 100K month, like all of those milestones, but my emotions around them laid out to see. It was really good. I joined there in 2016. So five solid years of doing the work and doing the other most important thing, right? Documenting my progress with the work. Yeah. And the, again, when I, when I saw it laid out like that, I was like, oh, I can see why so many people have invested in me out of that program. And I'm telling you now, I have never solicited any business from there. I've never um, posted like just in, I've always talked about my business in context of the work. I've always been there and encouraging and supporting other people. I've never openly solicited for business in there. I've never, um, you know, I think once I got one post of feedback, it wasn't even it got pulled out, but the feedback was, this feels a little bit promotional. I was like, cool, like, so I said about like total respect to the group. And you can just see in my content, I was documenting my progress with the work. And even though I was talking about my business and I was talking about what I did, and yes, I did talk about having a LinkedIn mastermind because it's kind of in the context of the work that I was paying to learn and implement about. So that's why I never got pulled up on it, if that makes sense. But also, I was constantly getting messages and friend requests from people in that group saying, oh, I really think you can help me. I, I've seen your post. You know, can you help me with LinkedIn, right? And the other thing that was so apparent, which isn't news to you guys, I know, and it's like, it's not news to me, but when I see it laid out in black and white, it makes even more sense is that I was so consistent. I was doing one thing. I was focused on that. I was focused on the work, which is the money mindset in this case. It's a money mindset group. I was doing the work. I was focused on the work. I was documenting my progress inside the group, as well as being, you know, energetically being present in the group giving more than I was taking, you know, sharing my story, sharing my, my wins and my losses, encouraging other people, posting to help new people. But, you know, and I just thought, I've just been a really, I believe, as a group owner now, like a pretty good member of that community, like in terms of what I was putting in. I wasn't, I was just generally positive and supportive. And I was like talking about my 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 challenges but I wasn't letting it completely spiral me down and I was learning as I was going and I was talking as I was going I was sharing my stuff and I was being open and vulnerable and I just thought ah, that's why that's why and I was so consistent because I was always selling one thing which is LinkedIn mastermind right so it's no surprise really when you look back and you think in five years of being in that program that I invested fifteen hundred dollars in of course I've made tens and tens of thousands of pounds from people probably hundred thousand pounds plus from people who know me from that community who've of their own accord followed me found me messaged me bought from me and there's probably so many that i i don't know came from that community if that makes sense because there's two thousand people in there right and it's the same with dan's world i was like dan gave me my first ever in fact it was my first ever guest expert that stayed in the vault in his paid program and inside EWD, I was like, it's same. I'm talking and constantly talking about what I was doing, my wins and losses, exactly the same thing. And being a good member of that community. And it's no surprise that people connected with me. We had that in common. They saw my progress. I documented my progress. I kept it all in the context of the work, as you always should, because that's the right thing to do. I wasn't promotional. And people just started to recommend me within that group, much much so more in Dan's group, obviously it's a business group. You know, people recommend me in there, they buy from me, they, you know, and it's not because I get to promote, because I don't and I won't and I wouldn't. It's that people naturally are know my story. And it's the same with them as well. That's what I would say. It's like it's a 50-50 game, right? It's like I can recommend people in that community. They will recommend me but because you're in the same community you have that tribal thing you have that thing in common that makes you feel like if this person's in this group and i'm in this group we're good to go and that has that level of trust which is great it doesn't always work out it doesn't guarantee that everything's going to be okay but it's a it, it if people are going to have two people to choose from for example they're probably more likely to choose somebody who you're in the same community with and they've 
document your progress and your business you know, all that kind of stuff so hopefully that makes sense so one of the things i want to think about <clears throat> around this one is in the groups that you're in when you're in them are you in them for what you can get or are you in them for what you can give yeah and it's the giver's gain right so the more you give to the community the more you support the community, the more you don't make everything about you, right? I don't know if I've always been great at that. <laughs> like, I'm not perfect, obviously. And I can definitely see an evolution of me when you see, you know, um, in my five years, when I was really struggling, it was more about me. It's just Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? I couldn't pay my bills. I couldn't, I could barely make my monthly payment or whatever it was, you know? So it was a lot more about me, but the more I learned, and the more secure my foundations became both confidence in myself as a business owner, confidence in myself, in my money mindset, for example, in the, uh, with, with Denise's stuff, or confident in myself with my marketing, which was, you know, talking about in, in dance stuff. Like then I switched from, yeah, I need a lot of support and I need a lot of space to work this stuff out into much more I can give now. Now our foundations are in place. Um, much easier for me to give back to this community, to be part of it, and to put put as much effort in as I'm taking out. Why are the cards you shop at Tesco Town? Uh, um, um, I don't know where they are. Uh, so you'll have to find them, but when you find them, you can. I can go out. In the kitchen. Thanks. So, <coughs> so it's it's really important that when you are when you are when you are feel like you've got your foundations in place and you are able and you have learned and you have implemented is how can I actually help more people, particularly people coming up behind me who are feeling like I felt when I joined the program and I didn't know anyone and I didn't feel part of it. And I do feel like a lot of communities can be accused of being clicky. I'm not saying they're not. Some communities absolutely are, of course, but sometimes if you're in the click, you don't feel like it's as clicky. How do you get in the click? I think it's by documenting your progress, being a good citizen, giving back as soon as you're able, having a balanced view, doing the work, implementing the work, getting the results, documenting your progress. So hopefully that helps you just think about actually, you know, some people might have the attitude of, I paid to be in a program. I just want to learn the stuff, do the work, get my money back. I'm not interested in building up my sort of like my visibility within that community. And it's like, that's where your return on your investment comes from. In my opinion, like definitely give yourself a better chance of not just getting a return on your investment, but maximizing that for years to come. Um, so document your progress in there. And it's once you get into the swing of it and you get over the fact of like, like I was, people aren't interested in me and my story, and you just start telling it anyway, even when you feel like you've not really got a story to tell, like people get on that bus with you and they get in the story with you. Third reason why I joined these programs, like I said at the beginning, and one of the things that I've took from it, which actually has given me a huge return on my investment into their programs, is learning from the leader, pay to play. Yeah, you pay to play, you pay to be in their community, you get closer to them, and you also, from the inside, get to see how they operate as you as a paying customer, right? So you can see and you can feel it, which means that you learn so much of, like, the right way to do things and the wrong way to do things. Like, I learned so much from Dan around dealing with haters, like, running communities, like, making people feel part of something. And the same with Denise. Like, I, I just... I still remember now, I've done it with Dan's stuff, I did it with Denise's stuff. It's like, I did the maths. I, I talk about this all the time. I, I joined Money Bootcamp and I was like, right, I just paid $1,500 and I was to myself, I was scared, I was shaking doing it and I was like totally out of my depth and uh, I had no money. <laughs> That's how I knew I needed to improve my money mindset evidence, right? And I put it on a credit card and I was just like, oh my God. And I remember getting into the Facebook group <clears throat> and I know, you know, this is not absolutely accurate when it comes to business maths, right? But I looked and I was like, I've spent fifteen hundred dollars, and there's two thousand people in here. And so I was like, um, did the maths? So I was like, that's three million pounds. <laughs> and I just remember sitting there, like open mouth, like, wow, like this is possible. And this, I'm gonna, I'm in it now, so I can see how they do it. And I just learned so much about building communities, about having boundaries from them. 
um, you know, dealing with people that were like difficult. Like it was just such an education. If you have an ambition to emulate things like paid memberships, masterminds, and programs, number one thing I would say is pay to join the good ones and watch, watch and learn. Do not steal things, obviously. Watch and learn. How does this person make you feel? How does this community run? What are the like technicalities of it? What's the mindset? I mean, and Denise is great at this. I, I mean, I, well, they all are, but talking about how she does things, how it makes her feel, how much money she's making, how that money's broken down, how, you know, how she feels. Thing. And being on the inside, you just, you're closer to it, to them, and you get that information first, and you get that information like straight from the horse's mouth basically and that is worth so much if you it's like having an apprenticeship in doing what you want to do like and how much money have i had as a return on that investment from understanding how these programs operate and taking the bits that i've loved from them and using my own work obviously my own work my own words my you know my own team my own structure created programs from them and every community is totally different because it comes from the top right the the you know that whole your vibe attracts your tribe is like so it's like it's just a it's a cliche but it's a cliche because it's true right everyone creates their own culture and their own sort of thing and i remember <coughs> when i was with mitch once i think we were in medellin and i was talking about cults you know and he's the best red man I've ever met, but like, he was talking about cult behaviors are very similar to how programs operate, but not in an, in an evil way, in a, you know, the having like, you know, language and behaviors and almost like, like in our communities, we've got like sayings and certain things that we do and people know how I'm going to react to things and they know how I would give feedback and things like that. So it's like this cultural thing that makes people feel differently when they're in it and to me joining someone else's program and seeing how they do it instead of trying to cobble it together from free stuff is how I've got a massive return on those investments definitely I I can only imagine it. it's got to be let's say I've invested 50k I must have got I must have got 10 times back I must have got that return on that investment okay so and then finally for a bonus become a brand ambassador for these people. When you join a program and you give it your all and you put everything into it and you take what you need and you get educated and you do the work and you meet each other halfway, become a brand ambassador. And by that, I mean, respect them, shout about them, refer people to them. Yes, you can become an affiliate and get paid for it, but you can also do it for free and you should do it for free. I'm not an affiliate for Denise or Dan or Mitch. Um, but I respect everything that they've done for me as a business owner. I feel like I've been a good member of their communities, but most importantly, without them, I would not have got where I am as fast as I have. No way. So it's the least I can do is to talk about them and shout about them. And we see this so much now and it makes me feel like emotional when I see people doing it for me, right? Because <clears throat> we do have affiliates, but a lot of people would just tell people anyway they will refer people anyway and they love it like they love not everybody can't keep everyone happy i learned that from mitch and dan and denise right can't keep everybody happy and nor should you try to but yeah i mean it's just a beautiful thing when you see somebody referring you or pointing people your way or you get that dm and or that intro and it's kind of like that's you 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 give back like have i sent half a million pounds worth of business these people's way probably, <laughs> probably over the years, you know, over five years, then 100k a year, I would have probably thought so. So it's about thinking bigger than how do I get a return on this investment now? It's like, if I invest in this, and I become part of this community, and I do the work, and I get the results, and I document my progress, and I learn from this leader, like, where am I going to be in five years? Because trust me, when I look back at five years of me, of being in those circles, it was a wild transformation, a wild transformation, like, over five years. And that's the other thing, five years. It's not five minutes, it's not five weeks, and it's not five months. This is five years 
of doing these things and showing up and being a part of those communities and always looking at how I can give more than I take. And by just doing it that way and having that bigger picture mindset, not that short term thinking, it's just been absolutely incredible. So yeah, big shout out to those guys, particularly, well, they're my three, like, who are your three? And I said this today inside the, um, the LinkedIn mastermind, I am on some people's wish list and weirdly I've just gone back to the uh, <laughs> to the to the comments I just saw Cheryl's right yeah so this is really interesting and I can press this button now so Cheryl I love Denise her boot camp is on my wish list so I am on some people's wish lists right they know what I do and they desire to work to get into my programs to work closer with me whether it's the LinkedIn mastermind or the business mastermind Denise a lot of people more than me Denise is on other people's wish list, but Cheryl, you'll be on somebody's wish list. Everybody here will have people wanting to work with them. So it's all about how can you stay where you are and make sure that when people are ready and willing, able and excited to buy from you, you're exactly where they left you and you've not moved anywhere and change what you do and change what you're doing. So get things off your wish list as soon as possible. If the stuff that you want to do, think about the investment into a program as an investment into the next five years of your business life, but only if you're prepared to do the things that I've talked about. It Otherwise, you are just be a course junkie. You'll just get into the mindset of, I keep spending money and I'm not really getting it back. I keep buying into programs, but I'm not getting a return on my investment unless you're doing these three things regularly and making that photo like getting really focused on that i would say don't buy any more programs until you've got your return on your investment and that comes from these three things number one doing the work right doing the work learning and implementing not just learning documenting your progress inside that community so people can get to know you know who you are know what you do in the context of the work and give back as soon as you have the foundations in place and you're able to and learn from the leader so get and take the lessons that you're seeing the good and the bad not all good you know some you know some things you might think i'd never do that i'd never do that like that's completely up to you one thing that i would say is i was trying to make communities that i would love to be a part of and i'd never want to leave doesn't mean that they're for everybody doesn't mean that everyone loves them just means that i would love them and that's that's what matters to me. We can't please everyone, obviously. Uh, and as a bonus, be a brand ambassador everywhere you go, right? Because we do notice, we do see it, and we do notice, and we do appreciate it, definitely. So, hopefully that was useful. Um, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Rhoda. Yeah. Oh, I thought I managed to press it. Oh, there we go. Hey, Rhoda. Love this, Helen. So true about being a brand ambassador and documenting your progress. Yes, it's about... The bigger picture, right? It's the bigger picture, the bigger picture. I think that's one thing I would say that I've um, noticed is people aren't really thinking big and long term. They're thinking small and short term. You know, I paid a thousand pound or five thousand pound. Like, when's my money coming back? Like, well, are we doing all the things that make the work work? Are we documenting our progress and being a really good member of that community? And are we learning from the leader and implementing that in our own lives and businesses? So I thought that'd be useful for you guys. Cheers, don't even bring my beer. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that was useful. So if you've got any questions, send me a message. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Um, yeah, and shout out all, all the people in my programs who make my programs amazing right? Like without them, we wouldn't even have a program. Like literally I came off the LinkedIn mastermind today and I was just like, I love you all. And I'm like, I genuinely do. Like I love these people. i like, to me, they're an extension of my family, right? I just love them. I love the energy. I love the community. I love the vibe. Uh, and with the five day challenge coming up on the, oh, I can't never remember. This is my calendar for next year, by the way. So you can see it's already full. Um, 
Um, five day challenge starts. We've just started promoting it. 22nd. 22nd. I haven't even got to press a button for that. So sorry. Um, but it's coming up on the 22nd. So if you want, think about it. Right? So think about the things I've done. Thank you. 22nd. Oh, I'm going to put your laughing face up now. Oh, there you go. 22nd. <laughs> Somebody write the five day challenge starts on the 22nd of November. <laughs> and I can put that one up while I'm still talking. Um, so the five day challenge is like a microcosm. So it's not pay to play, right? But it's free, but you have to invest your time, which is super important, right? And it's almost, excuse me, it's almost like more important when you're investing time <laughs> because your time is like super precious, right? So if you're if you're investing your time, oh thanks guys. Let's put Sue up because she's just been working really hard helping me look make it look even more amazing. So <coughs> thanks Cheryl though. Um so the five day challenge is a microcosm of a pay program because you're still investing five or seven days of your time it's wild, it's a, it's a very quick, it's a very fast and furious, five day extravaganza. So think about it, right? Think about how you could leverage the five day challenge. Okay, so this is actually, I wasn't gonna talk about the five day challenge, but this is a perfect segue. So do the work. So number one, way to get the most out of the five day challenge, right? Number one, do the work learn implement learn implement right so number one do the work number two become like document your progress inside of the five day challenge group right talk about how you're feeling talk about your journey talk about what you're doing talk about your results in a micro version right be a cheerleader for the people be a supporter engage with other people's stuff like be a cool part of the community and you could do that for seven days right <laughs> it's a five day challenge it opens on the friday and it's done right and then finally, learn from me. So the five-day challenge is such a good way to learn from, from me if you're thinking about ever doing a five-day challenge because you're going to be in it. You're in it, you see how it runs, you'll be getting all the emails, you'll be getting all the bot messages, and you'll be able to see how it works. So if you've ever thought about doing a five-day challenge, you should be in a five-day challenge, right, on November the 22nd. Like, show up, learn what you can. You will learn stuff about LinkedIn as well. We'll show you how to get these from LinkedIn. Like, you literally can't lose. It's a win, 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 win. But really come at it and come into it with that mindset of, I'm going to give this my all. I'm giving it seven days. I am going to learn and implement in equal measure. I'm going to document my progress. And I am going to be a great part of this community. And I'm going to learn everything I can from being in here and how it works, right? I would say that is an incredible investment in your business over seven days. Like, don't miss it. You see how we build a community, a pop-up community of a couple of thousand people from nowhere who don't know each other. Well, so a lot of them will know each other. You know, <clears throat> there, there'll be people in there who are in the mastermind. There'll be people who've done five days challenges before. There'll be brand new people who've just clicked on a Facebook ad with a picture of my cat. Like, so it's going to be a mix. And if you've got any sense. And you're not allowed to pitch in there and you're not allowed to solicit, obviously. If you've got any sense and you sell to business owners and you know there's an event coming up with 2,000 plus business owners in it and you're going to be talking about how you're going to present yourself on LinkedIn, including introducing yourself, including having creating a headline on day three which shows exactly who you help, what outcomes you deliver, how you deliver them and how much you charge it kind of makes sense from a networking point of view to be inside the challenge and be super visible, super engaging. We've also got cash prizes, everyone. So we're gonna do cash prizes on the lives. So you might win some money for Christmas as well. There's literally everything to gain and nothing to lose except a bit of your time. So we'll see you on the 22nd of November. I will find the link and get it for you. But if you find me on Facebook and follow me anywhere, you will see promo for the five day challenge. It's starting in earnest and it we're ramping it up for over the next two weeks. So come and join the front and we'll see you in there and on there. And we're all gonna have a fab time. So, have a lovely evening, everyone. Lots of love.